Hi, everybody. Um, praise the Lord for giving us this opportunity and this time that we can study uh, from the Word of God. Last time I started to um, study from um, Genesis, which is entitled From Genesis to uh, Revelation. And today we'll continue and see some um, verses which help us to understand what the message of the Bible or uh, the message in uh, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In that, I try to explain that um, we don't have to follow the literal meaning of the, uh, the, the, the book of Genesis, in this case, to understand the deep meanings of the, uh, the Bible. It doesn't mean that those things didn't happen. But God can use one occasion to portray different kinds of meanings, different kinds of uh, interpretations. For example, the creation is a literal meaning. God created the heaven and the earth. That's it. It's literally that God created. And God created everything. It is literally the action of God, the act of God's action of creating things and bringing the things which we see, which we hear, which we um, perceive in our emotions, and those invisible things too. But what I'm saying is God hides the mystery of salvation, and the Bible is the book of a spiritual book which deals with salvation of mankind. We come to God through His Word. We communicate with God through His Word. The communication between man and God is through the Word of God. If there is no Word, there will not be any communication between us and God. How God looks as and how God created everything is described in the Bible, in the Word. So in Genesis 1, as we saw last time, it was bad, something bad, and that's also something good. From the beginning, everything was bad. Yet, when the light shines, when the Lord God commanded the light to shine upon the creation of God, when God ordained the light to shine upon His creation, things changed. I'm going to read it and continue uh, explaining that the light is Christ. That light was Nothing but Jesus Christ, because we have evidence from the Bible, a quote from the Bible, which the Apostle Paul quoted in Second Corinthians for uh, um, uh, chapter four, verse six. So uh, now let me go and um, let's see, uh, especially verse two and verses, um, verse three. Um. The earth was without form, void, and darkness was upon the face of, it was um, empty and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved or hovered over the, 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 the waters, the face of the waters, not the waters, the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. So we saw that there um, in verses 2 and 3, verses 2 and 3, there is a big difference. There are two worlds here. 
we have to understand this way. There are two different worlds in verse 2 and in verse 3. Verse 2 is damnation. Verse 2 is distraction, which is the word explained by the two Hebrew words, Bohu ba Bohu. Bohu and Tohu. These two words, um, I'm going to read it. Vehaaret haita tohu vohu. Vehaaret haita tohu vohu. These two words are very important key words to understand what God is speaking about. So, in between verse 2 and 3, verse 1, let me read. 1. The earth was empty. The earth was empty. There was nothing good. And we went to farther to the book of Jeremiah, the book of Isaiah, and we saw that these two things were voidness, emptiness. There was nothing good in, in it. The earth was empty. The earth was void. There was nothing important, a spiritually important thing there. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. The pit upon the face of the deep was darkness. Darkness ruled the creation of God. Darkness ruled the deep. So it was darkness. It was the worst thing. It was the worst thing. Darkness is that darkness was the devil and the power of the devil and the power of darkness, what we saw. And the Spirit of God hovering over the face of the waters. That means the Spirit of God did not come and rest upon the people, upon the nations. It was far away. It was just hovering over the surface, over the face. So everything was bad. There was a gap, a space between the people of the world and the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God was far away from the people. So this was the worst scenario. There was the worst thing in verse 2. Yet, God said, no, let there be light. Vayomer Elohim, yehi or, vayhi or. And the Lord say, let there be light. And there was light. That light was Jesus Christ. That light was God. God is light. In him there is no darkness, what the Bible says. First John 1 John 1.5 God is light and there is no darkness in him. So God is, Jesus Christ is the light in which, through which, God created the creation of the world. First, he ordained light. Because the creation cannot sustain, the creation cannot survive without the light. The plants, as we know, cannot live without light. And nobody else can live without light. Because light is an important ingredient for living things. We get food from the light. We get heat from the light. We get the most important thing for light to live from the light. So, so also is a spiritual matter. If there is no light, there is no spiritual being. Because the darkness will cover everything. And the darkness is the power of, of the evil the, the power of the devil. The darkness typifies the devil's power, the devil's strings, and the devil's dominion, his kingship. But the light is our hope. 
So light is our important ingredient in our life. Without life, light, we cannot survive. In spirituality, man cannot live without light. Without the word of God, we are dead. God said to Adam, which the Muslims are laughing about it, and uh, the ethics of uh, the Western society, uh, scholars, they also laugh with them. They are the same. Uh, they are not different. Actually, they are different. They are the same because both of them are against the truth, against God. And they laugh about the light. But praise God. Praise God. Because Jesus is our light. Jesus is our lawgiver. So in between verse 2 and verse 3, there is a very great difference. Verse 3 is salvation. Verse 3 is salvation. Verse 3 is restoration. Verse 3 is the reigning of life. Salvation, deliverance. Freedom. Because why? The light has come. And God saw the light that it was good. That it was good. God saw the light that it was good. So we, we Christians are in verse 2. Christians, we find Christians in verse 2. The saved, the redeemed, the delivered people, the ransomed people in verse 2, and the other world in verse, uh, I mean in verse 3, and the, the other world in verse 2. Those who are without hope, those who are without Christ, they are still in verse 2. They are in religion, they are in following their own instincts. They don't follow Christ Jesus. So following Christ Jesus is the most important thing in this world. It is better to follow Jesus Christ. Where are you thou now? Are you in, in, in the light? Are we in the light? Are we in Christ Jesus? Are we in our religion? Are we still in darkness? Are we still in the deep? which is governed, ruled by the darkness. But if we are in Christ, we are in the light. God transformed us from thick darkness into the light of the bright light of his son, the kingdom of light, to the kingdom of God. The Bible says that one. So we have seen last time, yesterday, we saw yesterday that the light was Jesus Christ. The light was Jesus Christ. That light was nothing but, but Jesus Christ. It was not the light of the, the, the candle. It was not the light of the... Anything else, the light of the sun, the moon, or anything. But it was the light of our Lord and Savior and the Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came to save us, to deliver us. And we have we saw what the darkness means. We are, we also saw what the world saw and we saw all that stuff. Now uh, I'm gonna add that um, um, I'm going to add some verses. We're going to see some more verses about this light, about Jesus. Because the important thing in the whole Bible, in Genesis, is a light. That the light which is uh, in um, uh, verse 3. Genesis 1, verse 3. Vayomer Elohim yehi or vayhi or. The other light, which is found in verse 14 and 16, 
המאורות. המאור הקטון לממשלת היום, והמאור הגדול לממשלת הלילה. מאור. מאור is a light bearer. a light bearer, luminary. In, in, in a Tanakh uh, with Rashi, they translated luminary objects, which bring, get a source from there and reflect the light. So we'll see that too, because today we are going to see the luminary objects also. Now, um, about this light, about God being light, we saw yesterday, but today I'm going to uh, continue reading. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor distraction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise. Now, it's saying, you know, no more violence, no more westerners, no more voidness, no more emptiness, but... God will transform you. That's what Isaiah is telling. Isaiah in uh, chapter 60, verse 18. There will not be violence. There will not be western, westerland. And there will not be distraction, which is in, um, which we saw this in, in, in uh, verse 2 of Genesis 1. So there will not be distraction. There will not be violence. There will not be westing. In thy borders, but thou shalt call thy wall salvation. That's redemption, thy gates praise. The praise when salvation comes and then follows praise, praising the Lord, magnifying the Lord, and worshiping the Lord. The sun, the sun shall be no more thy light by day. Neither for brightness shall be shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, an everlasting light. La or ha olam, la or or is light which we saw in Genesis one, la or ha olam, the light for ever. Olam is forever, a light forever. For the Lord himself, for the Lord himself shall be an everlasting light unto thee. That's what Isaiah is telling. The Lord himself is the light of his people, the light of his kingdom. He is the brightest light which drives, who drives away the darkness who drives away suffering, who drives, rides away all voidness, emptiness, meaninglessness, confusion. Everything is gone when Christ shines in us. So who is this light? This is this light, the everlasting light is Jesus Christ. Because he says, I am the light of the world, and whosoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Jesus says in, in um, the Gospel of John 8, 12, Jesus is the true light. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 5, starting from, from verse 5. So, the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not, did not comprehend it, did not understand it. Because the darkness is always, it darkens. It's just, when you are, an, you're, you, if there is something covers, something covers your eyes, you cannot see something. You don't have a chance to see what's around you, around you. But the Lord God will be an everlasting light. Amen. The Lord God will be an everlasting light. Unto thee. But the Lord 
shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. 60, Isaiah 60, verse 19. Thy son, thy son, that means your son, the son, S-U-N, thy son shall no more be down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light. He is the son. He is the son himself. The Lord Jesus Christ is the, the Son, the, the Son of Righteousness. In the book of Malachi, chapter 4, it says, Jesus is uh, the Son of Righteousness, who has healing in the wings, in his wings. So, everlasting light, in the days of thy morning shall be, shall never be ended. Chapter 60, verse 20, verse 20. So, the Lord God is the light of his people. The Lord, the Lord God is our light, who gives us light. Whenever we have light, we have food. Whenever we have light, we have everything. In the light, there is everything. In darkness, suffering, emptiness, nothingness. Confusion, as we saw yesterday. But in the light, life, life. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. Revelation twenty-one twenty-three. In the city of God, in the new kingdom, in the new Jerusalem, the Lamb will be the light forever. Who is the Lamb? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will be the light of the new kingdom, the new Jerusalem. So Jesus is our light. Is Jesus in your heart or are you still in darkness? Are you governed by the light of the kingdom of God? Or is or or are you still under the total control of the devil? Are you darkened by the the, the darkness? By the power of darkness? If you are in a religion, if you are in something else rather than Jesus Christ, you are damned. You are under the damnation of the devil. You are under a big curse. You need to go to Christ. You need to come to Christ. You, know, you have to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and get forgiveness from him so that he enlightens your life. He transforms your life into a different being. Because the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. He's a new creature. If anybody is in Christ. So we need Christ because he is a true light. He is a true light. So we can conclude that the world, there are two world in verse 2 of Genesis 1 and verse 3 of Genesis 1. Verse 3, the kingdom of light, Jesus Christ. And verse 2, the kingdom of darkness, that's the devil. Darkness upon the deep, the face of the deep. So the darkness rules the world today. Only those who are in Christ are in the kingdom of God, in the light of God. There are so many Christians who call themselves Christians, yet still they are in darkness. But knowing Christ is a different experience, is a personal experience, the experience which we have in our heart. It just starts in our heart, 
in our mind, in our mentality. And he comes and transforms us through his word. So when we read the word of God, when we come to learn from the word of God, when we understand what God is speaking about, the creation and all the account of his creation, that means we are in the kingdom of God. We are experiencing the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, you can experience it through the word of God. Reading, meditating upon the word of God and getting transformation from the word day by day leads to our salvation. Leads to our salvation. So this light is Jesus Christ. The light of uh, the, the 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 light of the kingdom of God is Jesus Christ. Now we're gonna see the other light, and what people say about this light. Uh, uh, that's uh, the fourth day creation, and the fourth day creation. The light of the sun and the light of Jesus Christ. Uh, what's the difference? The two words are 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 different. And as I said, the the light which describes Christ is or and the light which describes the other one is maor maor maorot maorot are the light bearers and as i said translated in an in um uh, uh the tana and with rashi um uh, light, uh, luminary objects, luminary. And God saw the light that which was good. And so the, the first one is or. Or is the first in, the, in, in, in verse 3 and 4. And the other one is um, um, the, the luminaries. What, what the people say about the luminaries and they try to try to make sense because people when they read the bible they try to make sense in any way by any means that's the problem today everyone is just taking the, uh, some verses and try to analyze them understand the, the verses based on their perception based on their experience from you know uh, around them but the Bible cannot be translated in that way, cannot be experienced in that way. Because the Bible is the Word of God. Holy men, driven by the Spirit of God, led by the Spirit of God, wrote, wrote the Bible. Holy men. So it is the Word of God. And we cannot associated with a, a culture of some people, with a culture of that people, or anywhere. But we have to understand it, the Bible within the Bible. The Bible is its own grammar. The Bible is its own dictionary. And the, the Bible is it just, you know, it is, it is by itself. We even, we don't have to depend upon the commentaries. I don't use anymore any commentary. Of course, we use um, different materials, sources, which can help us, the con concordances, which uh, help us to understand the meaning of every word, the words. So, let there be the luminaries. Uh, they were created, they say, um, they say about the luminaries. They were created on the first day, and on the fourth day, God commanded them to be suspended in the sky. And likewise, all the creations of the heaven and the earth were created on the first day, and each one was fixed in its proper place on the day that was decreed upon it. So this is uh, uh, the Jewish understanding, the Jewish view of uh, about the light. Because... There is a question, where is the source of the light in the sun the first day? 
there is always question. What they say, the, the Hebrews say, say is, well, God created the first day, and he put them over there. But in the third and the fourth day, the fourth day, he put them on the sky. He put them on the sky. That means when God said, there, let there be light, they say he created the, the moon, the star, and everything. But the, third, the fourth day, he put them. But, you know, we can't, I mean, you, it's, it's, um, it's difficult, really. I cannot imagine how they try to explain it. Because it is, the creation is day by day. It's a day by day experience, which God did mentioned he didn't say i created this one and i put it in the other this day no god created in the same day which he created them so why they they went to this explanation because they don't know what the source for for the the, the first daylight was even we couldn't we couldn't have known that Unless we could, we 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 read the the um, um, uh, um, second second um, Corinthians, second Corinthians. Um, I don't know if this book is second Corinthians. It is God who commanded to light the the to shine the light out of the darkness. So that the, the the knowledge, the glory of God may shine through before the the face of Christ. God commanded, He says. So God commanded the the the, the light, Christ, to shine in our heart. To shine in our heart. So the first day, light was Christ, and the other light is different one these are not uh, ores but these were um, maorot maorot vayomer elohim yehi maorot yehi maorot barakia hashamayim lahabdil ben hayom uben halayla so the lord put this light to divide it between the day and the night. This is these are not like that. Or no, maorot, maorot, in the fourth day. And God said, "Let there be luminaries in the expanses of the heavens to separate between the day and between the night." And they shall be for signs and for appointed seasons and for days for and four years. In four years, this is the account of the 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 the, um, the fourth day that the Lord created. This light, morot, are like the candlelight and other lights also included, and the light of the moon and the the sun. So. The Hebrews say they were created in the first day. They were created like the the ore, but it is completely different. They are completely different because maorot is light bearers and ore is a true light. And the true light is a Christ Jesus in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God. In uh, the book of Psalm um, uh, 74, 16 and 90 uh, verse 8, Psalm 90 verse 8, it relates the Ma'orot to the sun and the, to the moon, the light of the moon and the light of the sun. But the first day light is the light of Christ, the Christ who comes to save us, to shine in our lives. So, how do we understand? We understand in this way, that God wrote the Bible for the purpose of bringing back 
Man from distraction. It is not a book of something else. It is not about biology or about anything else, about history. It is about, it's a spiritual book. It is a spiritual book to revive our spirit, to transform us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. To bring us from distraction to salvation. To, 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 to take us from hell, being thrown into a hell fire, into the kingdom of heaven. To take us out of misery, out of sadness, out of brokenness, and give us hope, give us inspiration, give us everything which is good. So we have to understand the Bible in that way. And in our next program, we'll study about the division. The division. The Lord God divided. There is, as I said before, that the, the book of Genesis is a book of division. God divided from the, here, from there, here, from there, light from water, from water, light from darkness. And and there are a, a lot of things, other, other, other things too. So we'll study on that. But today we finish about the light and we learn that the light is Christ, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, um, um, and he's our Savior and he's our Redeemer. And the Bible is talking about Jesus Christ, nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. Um, let me read and finish uh, about this light thing. Oh, light is light, glorious light. Um, it is in, in a what is what is uh, the Genesis, uh, the, the book of um, John, the first John. It is tough uh, sometimes. In the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That's a word which through which we communicate with God. We communicate with God through the word. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that has been made. That was made. In him was life. Here is the most important thing. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The life of Christ Jesus was the light of men. The light of men. Jesus Christ came to give his soul, his life, so that it can be light into the people under darkness. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The people who are in darkness cannot understand the light, because the darkness totally controls them. They are in absolute control of the darkness. Well, the darkness. Yes. That was the true light which lights every man that comes into the world. The true light that lights every man that comes into the world. Who? Christ Jesus. That's verse 9. John 1 verse 9. Jesus Christ was the true light that lightens every man who comes into the world. Praise the Lord. He is a true light. And then we go to um, um, you can also read in chapter 3 that about the, the light of Christ. So Christ is our light. He is a true light who lights every man. And I invite everybody to come to Christ to experience his light and to know the kingdom of God and to 
get be, be transformed into the likeness of God and have hope and have everlasting life. Inherit, I call you to inherit the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light through Christ Jesus, our bright light. Until I see you in another program, God be with you, all with all.